Okay, this is just the uh, work through for the fourth weekly test. Um, on the whole, uh, you guys did a bit better uh, at, this, at this, but there were still um, quite a few conceptual errors that we must just address. The cycle hex and chair confirmation, most of you got it correct. The mistakes were really just in the, uh, um, you, you sort of, uh, some of you drew the chairs uh, very kind of skew, like you had some, you know, on the piece of paper they looked a bit like this. Um, this is not right. You need to keep, you know, uh, in line with the, the bottom of the, uh, the page. And then remember that all the opposite lines need to be parallel to uh, each other. All right. Uh, and then uh, another mistake, not many of you, probably about two or three of you made, was you drew out the enantiomers because you numbered this one, two, three, four. You're going around in a clockwise direction. And then you put the numbers here anti-clockwise. Be careful of that. So if we give this position one, then that's going to be two, that'll be three, and this will be four. Uh, okay, so bromine is pointing up over there, so it must be going axial because the up position is that. Uh, uh, it's got to be down over here, which means that it must be straight down because it's axial. And over here, it must be straight down as well because it's in the down position. Down is axial in that position. And then we just draw the other one, and there were a whole uh, number of different ways that we could have done that. And uh, so one way is just to redraw the... Sorry, I've made a mess there, um, the other one. But um, just redraw uh, this and just start numbering one next door. Instead of putting the one there, put the one there. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then uh, bromine is now, see, parallel to that. It's going up. Um, oxygen over there, hydroxyl group, must be parallel to those lines like that, uh, and then the isopropyl group must be, sorry, we make it so I don't mess here, because this other thing, where I erase it is, um, and it would look something like that. All right, so there would have been two marks each for that. Uh, this one over here was uh, uh, clearly the partner that we needed to it, and most, most people got that. Um, we're wanting this aldehyde as the partner, because um, this is the bond that's being formed, this is a silyl enol ether, not reactive. We need to activate that. That's where a lot of you made a mistake. You didn't uh, get that. Most of you didn't. Um, remember that we need to activate the aldehyde, so we need to add a Lewis acid. Um, there are a whole host of different Lewis acids that we could add. A very typical one for these is uh, titanium uh, tetrachloride. All right. If you'd said Lewis acid, I would have given you the mark. From titanium tetrachloride, that would have been okay. Uh, at the end, uh, I wasn't too bothered by this, but technically there should have been a second step afterwards where you would have added just a weak acid or water um, to uh, just protonate uh, this and just get it out. That's just part of the workup uh, procedure though. This one over here was done not so well. Um, the first thing is to recognize that you know, you're going to form the enolate there, lithium hexamethyl disilazide. It's like LDA. Go and look that up again, see what it is. But it's a strong base, just like LDA. Lithium hexamethyl disilazide, low temperature. We're going to form the enolate at this carbon over there. And when we form that enolate, uh, when it reacts with that aldehyde, um, we're not going to, the product that we're going to get, and this is where, whoops, phenyl, um, most of you got wrong, is that you left out this carbon here. Um, the product is going to look like this. All right. Um, and a lot of you left out this carbon here. Uh, and that's the new bond that was formed. So this was the aldehyde. This is not going to eliminate under these conditions because it's too low a temperature. Uh, typically, if we did this at higher temperatures, this would uh, eliminate uh, through an E1CB mechanism if there was excess base present, uh, but normally this doesn't happen with basic conditions. It's, it's the acid conditions which cause elimination to go to give the double bond there. But this question was actually asking, give both diastereomers, and it was now the next level, the sort of second mark, and it was that to recognize there's a chiral center there and there's a chiral center there. So one diastereomer would be where the methyl group is up, 
and the other one where the OH is up, and the other diastereoma, and this follows on from what I, the question we had last week, they're actually related, go back you'll see that, you have to draw out a diastereoma, so we just change one of the chiral centers and leave the other one the same. All right. And this last question was so-so answered. Um, about half of you kind of knew what was going on, but um, others kind of missed it. Um, the two problems with this reaction, the first one is that sodium hydroxide is going to hydrolyze the ester, um, and that's, so you certainly wouldn't get this product uh, in the end. Um, uh, that, that's just a standard hydrolysis. And the second problem is that sodium hydroxide is going to enolize because this is all mixed together, it's not like a one-step, two-step thing, this is all mixed together, and so this will definitely analyze the aldehyde, um, which means that we'll get that, um, and this is so reactive that it's going to react with the, the aldehyde itself, uh, so you get the self-condensation of the aldehyde, it's always something we have to watch out uh, for in the, these these reactions, so so those are the two problems: hydrolysis of the ester and uh, self condensation of the aldehyde. The solution to this, um, there are a number of ways. Um, my, my way, just off the top of my head, would have been, well, form a specific enol equivalent or enolate equivalent. Um, so take this and add LDA to it, and and form um, CO2ME, you know, this in solution um, by deprotonating there using LDA. Um, and uh, once you've got this, you then second step, you know, step one, step two would be to add the, the aldehyde. Uh, and, and of course, the problem with that, of course, would be that we'd end up with, um, because it's this sort of thing, we would end up with an OH from the aldehyde, and this is the CO2ME. All right, because we would have connected between the two things. So we would have ended up with that, and then we would have to have dehydrated this um, using some base or some acid, E1CB mechanism again. So that's one way that it worked. And other people did come up with something which... Um, suggestion which would work is you could also add a much weaker base like um, someone suggested pyridine um, that would have been fine it's a weak base the advantage of this is it would have helped promote the enolization of this more than this one and so we could mix everything together and we should get a reaction occurring um, some other people mentioned triethylamine that's also uh, possibly something that um, would be a good thing to work, and that would be a one-pot reaction, uh, and that could actually be quite a bit of an advantage instead of doing this, you know, LDA, low temperature, etc. All right, so that's um, weekly test four. Hope that was helpful.